What's happening everyone, Nick here from TV Box Stop and today I feature a TV box I believe deserves an audience because it runs on the Amlogic S922X Hexacore CPU and the Mali G52 GPU. It's manufactured by one of the top name brands in the industry and I am curious to see what it can do. This is the Rico Magic RKM MK25 and this one runs on 4GB of RAM and 32GB of internal storage. There's a 2GB 16GB model and a 4GB 64GB model. Rico Magic is no newcomer to the industry and their last high-end model that ran on the Rockchip RK3399 CPU was a very stable high-performing TV box with great features. So up next, can they do it again in this model? And maybe we could get some answers as to why it was absent in major retail stores in 2020. To find out that and more, stay tuned, my full review is up next. Welcome back. So in the box, you have nothing out of the ordinary. You have the MK25 TV box itself. You get one IR remote, one HDMI cable, a 5 volts 2 amps DC power adapter, and a user manual. Let's have a look at its design and ports. Its body is made of metal and there's nothing printed to the top. To the rear of the box, you have one HDMI 2.0 port, one RJ45 Ethernet LAN port, one optical audio port, one AV port, a pair of external antennas, and the DC power input. On one side, you have one USB 3.0 port, one USB 2.0, a micro SD card reader, and some cooling vents. It's blank on the opposite side. At the front, you have an LED display. And below the box, you have four rubber feet and no ventilation holes. So I will now set this up on my 4K TV and the capture card and continue. In starting up the box, you are greeted by an RKM animation for a few seconds, then you are taken directly to the launcher. The entire process takes 26 seconds to complete. The launcher has a very simple layout with large main buttons that cannot be changed and a shortcuts bar here at the bottom. It has a one-click cleanup button for killing apps running in the background and freeing up system resources. And it comes with a navigation bar and a full status bar with system controls. Features include 4K display up to 2160p at 60Hz. It has HDR and Dolby Vision display, but there aren't any settings for them as they are enabled by default. You have HDMI CEC options, power key definition options, you have Bluetooth settings, and you have digital audio options. It does not have a root switch, hardware monitor settings, built-in screen rotation, or Samba server settings. For pre-installed apps, they have included the bare minimum and it does not have any Miracast or OTA updates, so I will install some additional apps and continue. Please note, when I attempted to access the Google Play Store, I noticed that I couldn't get the Wi-Fi to stay connected or browse any data on both bands. I can only access the internet on the LAN port. The Wi-Fi bands says that they are connected but nothing happens and it drops consistently. Now this firmware was compiled on the 9th of the 9th 2020 and this is the latest updated firmware. However, there is an earlier stock firmware compiled on the 7th of the 4th 2020. So I will install the stock firmware and see if the problems persist. So I've successfully installed all my apps and I didn't experience any restrictions from the Google Play Store. So to start this segment, let's have a look at its system and hardware information. The manufacturer is Amlogic and it runs on 4GB of RAM and 32GB of internal storage and this is the remainder after the Android installation and all the apps installed. The Bluetooth version is 4.2 according to the product description and is represented by the 4 plus below here. 
the CPU is the Amlogic S922X, which comprises of two CPUs, a dual core Cortex A53 clocked at 1.8 GHz, and a quad core Cortex A73 clocked at 1.7 GHz for a total of six cores with a maximum CPU clock range of 1.8 GHz configured in 32 bit mode. It only has support for 32-bit ABIs, which limits it to only 32-bit applications. The GPU is the Mali G52 MP6 with a refresh rate of 60Hz and OpenGL ES version 3.2, which is good for gaming. It has dual-band Wi-Fi support and the 5GHz band is supported. The operating system is Android 9 Pi and the box is rooted. The box runs cool around 46 degrees Celsius with its metal design and I will monitor to see how high it increases during 3D gaming. It comes with all the decoders for the playback of 4K HDR videos and it has DTS and Dolby decoders for the playback of digital surround song audio. And that's it for its system and hardware information and let's have a look at its benchmarks. And to start this segment, let's have a look at its RAM copy speed and its internal storage read and write speeds. It has a RAM copy speed of 5635 megabytes per second. Its internal storage has a read speed of 141 megabytes per second and a write speed of 103. These scores are high scores, one of the features of these hexa-core models. In the Wi-Fi bands and Ethernet LAN speed tests, the results show that it has maximum bandwidth on the 5GHz band and on the LAN port. The 2.4GHz band achieved 54%. Whilst the 5GHz band and the LAN port achieved 100% of my bandwidth, I've seen in other boxes that the 2.4 band can also achieve the same results. So it remains a mystery as to why the 2.4 GHz band achieved 100% in some boxes and in others it has a limited threshold. In the Antutu benchmark, it scored 112,313. The MK25 here producing a pretty high score and should see to it that it places high on the rankings chart. In the Geekbench 4 CPU benchmark that focuses specifically on the performance of the Hexacore CPU, resulted in a score of 1,140 single core and 3,144 multi core. Again, these are some pretty impressive scores, which places it directly in the high end TV box category. In the 3 Mark Gamers Bench GPU benchmark that focuses on the performance of its GPU and its 3D rendering performance, the app shows that it does not have Vulkan support, so it only qualified for the iStorm Extreme Test and the Slingshot Test. This resulted in the box maxing out in the iStorm Extreme Test, which is no surprise because this has been the trend with all S922X models, and it scored 1,455 in the Slingshot Test. What this means is that you can expect some really good 3D gaming performance despite not having Vulkan support. So this was my final benchmark. I will now enter the scores on my rankings chart and let's see how it places. So I've updated the scores on my rankings chart and the RKM MK25 is at position 12 in reference to Antutu benchmark scores, placing it among the top performing TV boxes on my chart. You can view this all-time stats chart along with my new editor's choice chart for those who usually ask the question of which TV boxes do I personally recommend. See the links to these charts in the description below this video. To most viewers looking to purchase a TV box, the simple questions they usually want answered are, does the box stream movies and TV shows? Is it Google certified to play Netflix in HD and 4K quality? Can it play surround sound audio formats such as Dolby Atmos and DTS Audio? Does it have Dolby Vision and HDR display? Does it overheat and is it suitable for gaming? To answer these fundamental questions, I will first start with its root access and DRM information. The MK25 is rooted as shown here in the Root Checker app. This is good news as most of the apps and games that you would be using on a TV box requires root access. However, 
it doesn't have a root switch, which means those who have apps that require the box not to be rooted will not have the luxury of running those apps on this box. The other feature that goes hand in hand with root access is its digital rights management or DRM for short. The question of whether a box can play Netflix in HD or 4K quality heavily depends on Google's certification, its root access, and its digital rights management. In order to play Netflix and other premium streaming services in HD and 4K quality, a TV box must have the required Google certification and encryption to prevent users from copying and pirating movies. The MK25 has Google Wide Bind of a tree and no HDCP protection. This level of certification is insufficient, which means it will not be able to stream Netflix and other services in HD and 4K. The apps will install and you will be able to log into your account, but you will be restricted to standard or basic quality, whatever resolution that is for each service. Depending on where you live will determine which services are available to you without the use of a VPN. If you live outside of the US like me, you may have access to Netflix and Amazon Prime Video in their limited formats. You can work around these restrictions by using a VPN to geolocate your IP address to the United States. However, you will still be restricted to standard or basic quality due to the lack of required DRM. Currently, I'm the holder of a premium 4K Netflix account, and here in a movie description, there is no HD or HDR icon that I will usually see on a Google certified TV box. Other services such as Disney+, Plus, Sling TV, and HBO+, Plus will not work outside of the US without the use of a VPN. I am not a fan of VPNs as they tend to reduce the speed of my internet and often loses connection to their servers. However, in one of my next videos, I will feature a device that's going to change all of that and will be a game changer for those who would like to once and for all fix the issue of these restrictions without sacrificing a portion of their internet speed, so stay tuned for that. YouTube comes pre-installed and it's the Android TV version. It plays videos in 4K 2160p resolution, but I cannot check if it plays in HDR quality because on this box, HDR display is always on by default. The box does not come with the official version of Miracast, so I installed the AirScreen app as an alternative and here I'm casting my mobile phone to the box without issues. For those interested in customizing their launcher and using live wallpapers, I installed the ADW Launcher 2 together with an interactive live wallpaper and they both work without issues. For those who would like to use the box for digital signage, I'm sorry to report that this box does not support screen rotation to portrait mode. I will now play my list of 4K HDR videos.
win for Barca would be enough because it would give them the same number of points as Atletico, but the head-to-head -head goal difference is what counts in the case of a tie on points. The mosaic of the Camp Nou and the Barcelona hymn being sung as referee Mateo Loof prizing presence on the bench as well. Atletico playing in yellow, Barca in uh, their traditional... The videos played ok, but again, I cannot check for HDR display because the HDR display feature is on by default on this box. I will now test for digital surround sound audio formats with the box connected to my receiver in HDMI pass-through configuration using the VLC player with audio pass-through enabled in the settings area. This is Dolby Atmos, the world's first object-based cinematic audio. With powerful moving audio that transcends from channels to moving around you with pinpoint accuracy. Executioners, judges. Welcome to the inside of your head.
So this test shows that the MK25 has Dolby Atmos, TTS-X, HD Master Audio, Dolby Surround and THX. However, it does not have Dolby True HD. I will now connect my gamepad via Bluetooth and play some Android games to test its graphics rendering for gamepad key mapping and for overheating. been protecting my Sheila for a long time. Could you go and ask Uchiha how Sheila is now? Take this branch. It can carry the blessings of the gods. So from this test, it shows that the MK25 has one of the coolest temperatures during gaming due to the fact that the entire body acts as a large heatsink, so there's absolutely no overheating during gaming. Also, the graphics was of a high quality, you can play most Android games on their highest settings and you have gamepad key mapping capability. In summary, the MK25 is a well-designed high-end TV box that delivers